Hi, and welcome to Read Becca. And today we have my lovely assistant Ripley along with me. So a couple of weeks ago, I discovered the booktube goddess via a live stream chat. And in checking out videos, I discovered this original tag. But I wanted to actually save it for today because this is the anniversary of me finding Ripley outside and becoming a crazy cat lady. So <laughs> Ripley, well, we'll let her go. She wants to run around. Uh, so I have always been an animal lover and I'm literally that person that has a leash in their car because I find dogs all the time. But growing up, I never really knew anybody that had cats until as an adult, most of my adult friends um, had cats or were cat people. And so I had gotten to know cats a little bit, but I still had a lot of misconceptions about cats and their personalities. And so one night I was leaving my D&D &D game and outside, uh, off of a very busy street in the city, I saw a cat uh, in the alley and was sure it was going to be a feral cat. It looked pretty dirty and, and grungy. But I walked over and there was this sweet little cat who just let me pick her up and take her home. And so she rode a half hour drive home on my lap in the car and was completely calm and sweet. Um, I got her in and checked for a microchip and she didn't have one. Um, come to find out she was actually pregnant. So, so I wound out up a few weeks later having five kittens in my bathtub. So she set me off on a, a journey of learning all about cats, pregnant cats, newborn kittens. Obviously I had to raise the kittens. I wound up uh, finding adopters for the kittens myself. Um, and then I did some more research and learned about stray and feral cats. And particularly I started getting involved with trap neuter return or TNR, uh, where we try to basically solve the problem of uh, the cat overpopulation crisis that we're in that results in euthanizing a lot of cats um, in America particularly, but it's something that cat lovers can absolutely do. I think I spent about $20 on a humane trap that I can use to, um, to catch and trap um, and then take in for a humane uh, neuter surgery and re release them back into their, their regular life once I have a, a feral cat that's not suitable to go into a home. Um, feral cats, unlike dogs, can't really be socialized once they become adults for the most part. Um, if they have not been socialized past about eight weeks, it's pretty inhumane to, to put them in a home. Um, they're going to be uncomfortable and, and really unhappy about it. There are some cases where there are semi-feral cats and they're, they're okay with living alongside humans, but um, generally a lot of the feral cats, the most humane thing to do is to make sure they're fixed and send them back out. That way they're not increasing the problem and um, we're just kind of letting them go about their lives since this is very much a human created issue. So that is something now I'm, I'm pretty passionate about. So I will link some resources about TNR down below if you have interest in checking that out. So onward to the tag. All right, so the very first prompt is catnip, an addictive book or series that you devour in one sitting. Hmm, what can I do for that? All right, I will say Terry Pratchett's Tiffany Aching series, which is one of the sub-series in Discworld. Uh, I think this was not a, a one sitting, but it was a one day read. I read the entire five book series of Tiffany Aching uh, two years ago in December. I loved it. I kind of would like to do that again because a lot of the books have very wintry vibes and these are just cozy fast reads. Um, if you don't love the character of Tiffany Aching, there's probably something wrong with you. Next question is Litter Box, a book so stinky you want to bury it in the sand. I know already <laughs> exactly the one I want for that, um, and I don't have a copy because it's so stinky, uh, The Muse of Nightmares. So that is the second book in the Strange the Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor. 
I was okay with Strange the Dreamer. It was fine. Um, I really liked the character of Laszlo Strange, but uh, Muse of Nightmares, I started and all of the problems that I'd had with the first book were just amped up. So I stopped reading it. And then our fantasy book bingo had a square for second chance read. And I decided to give it a second chance. So I picked it up on audio this time. <laughs> started it on audio, couldn't stand the narrator. <laughs> so I got about 40 to 50% through dealing with this narrator who literally was screeching for the children's characters and couldn't take it anymore. So I gave up on the audio, but I was so determined to hate read it because it's such a long chunky book and I had made it halfway through that I got the print copy again from my library and read through the whole thing. So I think that is my longest review on Goodreads. I will link my very ranty review down below so you can check that out. Uh, number three is Scratching Post, a nonfiction book you keep going back to in order to sharpen your mind and your claws. Uh, I don't reread a lot of nonfiction, so that's a tough one. I think we are going to go with The Magic of Reality by Richard Dawkins and illustrated by Dave McKean. And it has really glorious illustrations. It's just beautiful. So. This book is very much um, a kind of a science primer. So it takes a look at world myths, basically, and then compares that with what we can actually say that we know via science. So um, I really enjoy this. It's, it's very simple and high level. Um, as someone who didn't come up with the greatest science education, uh, I think this gave me a lot of context to have conversations about those topics. So love this one. Next up we have Mouse, a short book or a short story that you like to play with and then devour. Don't know what we could do for that one. I think probably um, the short story that I have read the most is The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas by Ursula K. Le Guin. And it is more of a thought experiment than really just a simple short story. So I have, I've read and reread it and you can really pick it apart and, and think about the individual pieces and layers to it. So I think that's a good one for that. Uh, next question is Hairball, a book that you liked on the first read, but after the passage of time, you find it makes you want to throw up. Hmm. I don't think I keep around a lot of books that would make me want to throw up. Okay, I have two for this. They're not totally repulsive, so they don't really make me want to throw up. But they're ones I've turned sour on, I would say, um, or more sour on than I was on the original read, and both for the same reason. So I think on the first read, I rounded both of these books up for world building and magic but all around the writing the plotting the um the characterization is pretty weak so for those and th these are going to be some potentially uh unpopular opinions here i've got mistborn the final empire and i've got children of blood and bone um by tomi adiemi and I know Sanderson in particular um, has gotten a lot of flack for the characterization quality at this particular point in his career. And supposedly, you know, newer books in later Stormlight Archives work has improved a lot from what I hear. So, so I'm, you know, not, not giving up on the author at all. Um, Tomi Adeyemi, I have not heard the best things about the sequel, but I think in both cases, I would definitely be open to continuing with these series. So. They're not, they're not vomit inducing, but they might give me a hairball. <clears throat> All right, next question is attitude, a main character that has the attitude of a cat. Well, I, my, my gut instinct is to say lying cat from Saga, but I think that is probably a cheat since lying cat is actually a cat. Um, let's see. 
All right, so what we've got, I've got the perfect book for this, Gideon the Ninth. So even just Gideon on the cover there, you can tell uh, Gideon is, is very cat-like, very snarky, a lot of attitude, which is what this question is for. So definitely if you if you enjoy a uh, someone that toys with their enemies, <laughs> that is Gideon. So uh, definitely check out Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. And a perfect, a book or series that is so perfect that you can't find any flaws at all. Ooh, that's a tough one. So I think I already mentioned Le Guin, but give me a minute. All right, here we go. This is the Folio Society edition of The Left Hand of Darkness. I've got at least three separate editions of this book because it's probably my favorite book of all time, um, or, or one thereof. And uh, I love this book. Uh, I love everything about it. I think it was ahead of its time in uh, the sci-fi world. It was part of the SF New Wave, and uh, it really was exploring gender and feminism in ways that just were, were transformational. So love this book. I've read it multiple times. Everybody should read it. And uh, second to last, we've got Hiss, your favorite horror or scary book. So I don't read a whole lot of horror. Uh, I'm not opposed to it at all. I mean, I, I think it's probably cheating to say The Shining. <laughs> so let's skip Stephen King. And um, I don't have a copy, but I will say Six Wakes by Mer Lafferty. It is more psychological thriller maybe than horror. But it's kind of in that tradition of uh, 90s horror movies where people were isolated in a location and they slowly go crazy. So um, like, oh, what, what is Deep Water? The one with the sharks, <laughs> the genetically engineered sharks or um, Sunshine or uh, Event Horizon. Like, I love those those films. And actually, I will solicit your responses on this because I would absolutely love if I could find horror novels that fit the aesthetic of movies that I like. So um, for horror, I definitely am more in the psychological and um, atmospheric range versus the gory, gross stuff. Um, but I love Guillermo del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth I went to see in the theater. Um, there's a Spanish film that I think he actually brought over but was not directly involved in, uh, The Orphanage, and that's one of my favorites of all time. Uh, so yeah, if you if you know of ideas like that, like Bly Manor, uh, the series, I absolutely loved, but then I hated Turn of the Screw, so don't recommend me Turn of the Screw at all. So give me some horror wrecks that fit uh, stylistically like, you know, Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth or Crimson Peak, um, that kind of stuff. I would love to hear it. And then finally, last question, Nine Lives, a series or author you liked, then was dead to you, but then you liked again. So I, I think, I, I don't think I have any books actually on hand, but I would say C.S. Lewis maybe, um, just because growing up I read the Chronicles of Narnia probably dozens of times as a whole series and the individual books uh, that I love more than that. I read it a lot. And so that was very foundational to my reading upbringing. But then as an adult, I kind of learned about a lot of the problems of the messaging within some of that series and um, had come out of an evangelical upbringing, became agnostic, and obviously just didn't didn't hate them, wasn't totally against them, but I just didn't didn't jive with those messages. And so then, you know, in more recent years, I've kind of come around to, well, you know, I do love some of these stories and I have a lot of nostalgia for them. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to love every single thing about um, about the author or even the messaging behind them uh, in order to find joy in a story. So I think that is probably the best answer I've got on that because I, I just had a lukewarm period on C.S. Lewis really. 
Um, I'm always actually looking out for a nice box set of that series, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, because I, I do like it so much I would like to have it in my collection, but they're pretty expensive usually. So um, I would love to, to find one and uh, get that back on my shelves and maybe do a full reread read and see what I think about it in recent years. So that's it for the tag. Nobody tagged me. I just wanted to do it because this is fun. Uh, but if you also want to do it, you should do it. Nobody really tags anyone anymore. We're just all having a great time. So hope you enjoyed watching. If you want to see more, please like and subscribe.